everybody. We came to magnify the Lord on today. We serve an awesome God. How many know we serve an awesome God, a mighty God? He has kept us all year, bringing us into the new year, 2022. And we're going to serve our awesome God on today. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. Keep me. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken.
Somebody put your hand on it. How many folk came to praise God? How many folk tuning in came to praise God? Do you not know that it's a blessing to be in the service one more time? You just two weeks in to a new year. It's not time for you to sit down. You ought to still be praising God for bringing you through in the 2020. Anybody glad to be alive? Anybody glad that you're saved? Anybody glad God woke you up and allowed you to come to the house of worship one more time? Anybody glad that you know that you know that you know God will take care of you? Bless the name of our God. I, I, I had to have somebody pitch it last week. So this is my first sermon for 2020. So I'm 2022. So I'm locked and loaded. Y'all got to hold on today. Bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and all that is. Bless his holy name. Good to see you. We thank God for you. I hymn of the morning. Very familiar and a very powerful hymn. We ask that you would join us as we sing with uplifting voice. It says how to reach the masses. You know, that's our assignment. To reach the masses. Men of every birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. And I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Come on, everybody, sing it like you wrote it. How to reach? How to reach the masses, men of every birth. For an answer, Jesus the key. Oh, help me lift it. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw. Trust him.
your hand on it. Come on, anybody came to lift him up? Anybody came to lift him up? Anybody, I got a question for you. I wonder who will help me lift Jesus. Well, I wonder who. I said, I wonder who. Well, help me lift Jesus. Church, will you help me? Choir, will you help me? Oh, will you help me? Oh, I wonder, will you help me? Y'all, we got to lift him. 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 Oh, lift him. Somebody to help me. Help me lift oh, you we've got to lift him. Lift him. Lift him. Lift him. Lift him. Oh, lift him. Lift we've got to lift him. Lift oh, lift him. Lift On our jobs. Lift oh, lift him. Lift In our homes. Lift you got to lift him. Lift On the streets. Lift we got to lift him. We got to lift him higher. 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 Lift Jesus. We got to lift him higher. Oh, higher. Oh, higher. Oh, higher. This 2022, this 2022, we got to give him something. I'm going to ask you again, who came to lift Jesus? Come on, Reverend, lead us to the throne of grace. Come on, pray us in. Yes, sir. Let us pray. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Our Father and our God, what a blessing it is to come back to the house of worship and to call upon your holy and righteous name one more time. We come to say thank you. Thank you for the many blessings which you have bestowed upon us. We stop to say thank you, Lord. I was lying down as leaders last night. Thank you for our uprising this morning. Thank you for having allowed your angels to encamp round about us while we slumber and slept to an unfriendly world. And right early this morning at the dawning of a brand new day, great was your faithfulness unto us again. You were there somewhere in our bedroom, touched us with a finger of your divine love, did something for us that we couldn't do for ourselves, caused our eyes to come open and to behold the beauty of another day. And so we find ourselves in the house of worship saying, thank you, Lord. Bless your name for all the blessing that you have given unto us. We ask that you look upon every heart with divine favor. Meet our every needs according to your riches and glory. And Lord, we bring young people before you this morning throughout the land and country. We pray for young people right now in school system. 
We pray for young people all over the land and country. We ask that you'll be by their side. Be their God. Be only well, a God like you can be for them, we pray. And Lord, we ask that you look upon our nation this morning. We pray for the leaders of our nation, those who sit in high places. We lift them up before you, and uh, we ask that you would bless them to realize that uh, there is a God who sits high and looks low, and one that's ruled and super ruled the universe. Pray for the sick this morning, the shut in, in the, the hospitals this morning, in nursing home right now in jail cells right now. We pray for your people everywhere. And Lord, we thank you for this branch of Zion. We ask that you contain in the blessed only as a God like you can do. Look upon our pastor, the under shepherd of this flock. We pray for him this morning. We ask that you would bless him with a fresh anointing that he can preach the word this morning under the anointing of the Holy Spirit that some soul might be touched this morning that someone might come crying, I yield, I yield, what must I do to be saved? We pray for his family, his wife that stands by his side. We pray for his children. And Lord, we pray for all family of this branch of Zion. Look upon us. Continue to keep your loving arms around us. Continue to shield us in the hollow of your hand from the evil of this world. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done already. Thank you for how you brought us through the pandemic and how you are continuing to carry us. Bless your holy and righteous name. Lord, we realize that this old world is not our home, that we are just sojourners and pilgrims down here, but we have heard of another city, a city not made by hand. Oh, ask you, Lord, to bless us all to be able to hear your welcome voice saying one day, well done, thy good and faithful son. You've been faithful over a few things. Come up higher, and I'll make you rule over me. Father, if it be your will, without the loss of one under the sound of my voice, even on social media, we ask that you would move in a miraculous way and let all, bless us all to be in your presence one day, to be in your joy. Over there where there is no more sickness, no more more dying, no more crying. Over there where Job has declared that one day the weakened will cease from troubling. And our weary souls will be at rest. Lord, your name is worthy to be praised. So we close this prayer by saying thank you, Lord. Lord. Bless your name. Hallelujah. 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 To the name of our God. Father, this is my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Let every heart say. Amen. Amen and amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it.
Ensemble says, rejoice and yeah. be what? Glad in it. Amen. To those of y'all, maybe I hadn't seen you since last year. Good morning, good morning. How you doing and how are the children? Amen. Those who are tuning in, God bless you. We made it to another year. Amen. And we thank God for that. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord and to be among the saints. And thank you all. As you notice, we're trying to do what we can to make sure we follow protocol. I had them rope off the seats, and thank you all for spreading out a little bit. Uh, I do appreciate it. Um, we want to make sure it, as long as we can, we can keep our doors open. And that allow that means you have to cooperate and help us make sure we give each other distance to be in the same space as we worship God together. Amen. So thank you, thank you, and thank you. Also, uh, I tell you, I love y'all to the moon and back. And this is for those who are listening in as well. Uh, we made an appeal um, that we wanted to be a blessing to those who have been devastated uh, by the tornadoes. And I knew you all were going to do it. Um, we received a tally uh, from the, uh, tr from the uh, financial report. And I want to thank you all um, for an amount of $11,284.25. <laughs> those of you all who are tuning in, $11,284. We thank God for that. Now, by the time it goes out, it will be $12,000, but just based on your initial giving, it was $11,284 and uh, some cents. But let, let me say this. I thank each and every one of you all who participated, and God is pleased. Uh, there were some who gave $5, some who gave $50, somebody even gave $5,000. But here's the point. If you gave it with the right spirit, you will be blessed, and God is pleased. Amen? So we thank all of you for your contributions, and you will always rise to the occasion and we'll keep you posted as to uh, exactly where it's going once we uh, finalize some things we're hoping to to uh, find hopefully a church there in in the area um, that we can bless as well as well as some going to the Red Cross so once we finalize that and pinpoint it we'll let you know if if no, if no sooner than the church quarterly business meeting know that uh, we want to reach out and touch those who've been devastated amen and just know that the Lord blesses us to be a blessing to others amen Give yourselves another round of applause. Thank you so very much. I mentioned last week that we're going to stay the course in terms of uh, how we are presently operating. We're not going to change anything. So all of our scheduled gathering times will remain the same. Monday morning with the master, uh, Wednesday Bible study, uh, and Wednesday Sunday school review. 
and all those things we have in place, they will remain the same until further notice. So please spread the word, continue to be active, engaged, and involved. Uh, we thank God again that he's brought us to this place and to this time. Uh, as you know, we've got some other challenges facing us with this COVID, but God is able, and he will see us through. But we must do our part. Continue to wash your hands, and when you can, social uh, social distancing, if it's applicable, please um, find yourself in a place of, of social distancing uh, as, as well as wearing your mask. Now, this is what I've been told, and I did read up on it. Um, the CDC recommends now. It's the KN95 mask. Um, these masks, they recommend that these are probably the best. Uh, supposedly now the cloth, mat, cloth um, face pieces don't really do what we need them to do. So they are recommending that you get the KN95. Now, because I love y'all to the moon and back, uh, we ordered some KN95 mask for you all, but you got to be the church to get one. Let me help you. You just can't ride by the church and pick up one. No, you got to be in worship to get one. I don't know if they're in or not, but, but it, if they're not in, they should be in by this week, and we'll uh, make the announcement that we have them, and we'll make sure you all get one. But you need to be in service to get it. Amen. Now, feel free to go out and purchase your own, but we wanted to let you know what they look like in case you're not familiar with them, and it's called the KN95. So we ask that you would get that and try and protect yourself and the loved one as best you can. Amen. Again, we love you. Business as usual in terms of our meeting. We thank you again. And at this time, I'm going to give way to Deacon Simpson for a special announcement. Morning, church. Morning. We can do great things because you obey. Trust and obey. There is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. This is a stewardship mo moment as well as an appeal. Uh, Pastor has already given us some good news as how you have responded to our appeal for those in Kentucky. I'm a Kentuckian. That tornado uh, passed within 50 miles from where I was born and raised. So just because it's them today, my, 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 it does not mean that tomorrow it may be you. So every chance I have to do something for others, I'm going to take it because I truly believe it's better to be a blessing than to receive a blessing. We, you know from last week we made an appeal and you responded because we love our pastors. We love our pastors. We love our first lady. That sounded louder than the first. Let's do that again. You weren't quite ready. We love our pastor and our first lady. Amen. 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 So we're going to give you an opportunity. I have made the appeal during this week with our various services online. And I've asked you today, if you have your gift, please put it in a box. We got five young people who are holding the gift baskets this morning for the pastor and the first lady. We suggest, we, uh, we have suggested that for those who have been blessed, that at least you should give $5 per year for the pastor. We also ask you to recognize the first lady. If you, you can use your, in your envelopes, you have uh, a pastor's anniversary on it. In fact, it's almost to the front. Uh, so we want to use those. We want all checks, checks to, uh, and I, I'm taking the titles away because checks don't really recognize titles, but. Edwin Coffey, amen. A check for Edwin Coffey. A check for Carol Love Coffey. I could call her Carol Coffey, but that love is just, that's, <laughs> oh my goodness. But just two, two checks in the same envelope or same card would suffice. Now, if you've already done that, as I have, uh, this morning when we pass around, there will be a, a young person holding a gift box for 
the pastor and first lady. If you're ready, let us stand for the big dark choir. would follow the specific instructions of our ushers and as you come around come around with pep in your step and come around with a smile on your face why because the lord loves a cheerful giver let us now prepare to cheerfully give and we pray that y'all who are listening in continue to give online we appreciate your contributions as well Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless your holy and righteous name for all the blessings that you've given to us day in and day out. And Lord, this portion that has been brought back to your house this morning in the form of gifts, tithes, and offering, we present them to you now in the name of Jesus and ask that you receive them in the upbuilding of your kingdom in the hearts of your people. Lord, we thank you for the gift. We bless your name for the giver as well. Bless us all, we pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Let every heart say, Amen. Amen. Oh, blessed assurance, blessed assurance. Oh, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Oh, blessed assurance. Tears from my eyes. I, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus, He took me in. I have an assurance. I have an assurance. Oh, blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Let's 
your hand on it. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Him writer says, oh, what a foretaste of his glory divine. Amen. Thank you for your giving and thank you for the spirit which we encourage you and you tend to respond in giving because the Lord loves a cheerful giver. You ought not give God anything that you don't want him to have because you will not be blessed. Amen. Just wanted to separate uh, this announcement that on this Saturday at 11 o'clock there will be a memorial service for uh, Dr. Martin Murray Brown. Uh, if you are planning to attend, it's imperative that you call the church so we can get a count. Uh, that is this, this Saturday, 11 o'clock, memorial service for Martin Murray Brown. Uh, again, we need you to call in. And in fact, if you have not been calling in, it's going to be imperative that you do so so that we can kind of maintain a count and control um, that we don't over over. Over, uh, over seat you in the facility. So please, ma'am, please. So again, thank you for your cooperation in that, but that is going to be a very, very important. So we ask that you would pray for the Murray family. And the church said, amen, amen and amen. The ensemble will come and then there is a word from the Lord. How many of you know that there is power in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's all right for me, but how many of you really know that there is power in the name of Jesus? Anybody ever had to call them late in the midnight hour? Yeah. Oh, he's a wonder in my soul. We just going to sing this little song. Come on, Adrian. Oh, oh. Sing it with us. your question. Anybody ever been sick if, and God healed you? Can I see your hands if you've been sick and God healed your body? This is what I know him as. This is what I know him as.
listen, listen. I had always been in the church. And I've done some things that I'm not proud of. But I thank God that he did for me. Savior. Oh, he's my Savior. Savior. Anybody know him? Anybody love him? Anybody need him? Anybody came to worship him? That name is still above every other name. Word of God says that at that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess and if you do etymological study of that word every, it means the same thing in the Greek and the Hebrew that it means in American. Every. Every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Here's about eyes are closed. God, we thank you now for this moment, for this opportunity as we find ourselves in this new year 
we just cannot thank you enough because you thought enough of us to bring us through. Let this year be the year of increasing and our increase of praising you more and blessing you more and telling others about you more, studying your word more, leaning on you more, declaring that God is good all the time and all the time God is good. We bless your name. We ask now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be both pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Bless both in the sanctuary and on the airwaves. For we know that your word is still a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Christ Jesus' name we pray. Let every thankful and incited heart say amen, amen, and amen. Jump to your feet. Scripture for this morning, we have two numbers. The 13th chapter, we want to lift up verses 30 and 32, and then we want to run over to Joshua, chapter 10, verse 12. Numbers, 13th chapter, verses 30 through 32, and then Joshua, chapter 14, verses 10 through 12. When you have it, say, Amen. Amen. And it reads as follows. I'm reading from King James Version of the Bible. Starting at verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. That should have shouted somebody right there. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. If you would come with me now to Joshua 14 chapter verses 10 through 12. And it reads as follows. And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive. As he said, listen to the words of Caleb, these 40 and 5 years even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, listen to it. He says, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou was hearest in that day how the Anakims were there and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. I want to share with you on this first sermon for me in this new year. I want to talk from this theme and from this thought. Give me this mountain. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, pastor wants to preach with this thought on our minds. Give me this mountain. You may be seated. Brother Sally, this 
this past year has been a challenge for all of us. Really, these past two years have been a challenge for all of us. I mean, think about it, you all. Who would have thought that we would ever have to fear shaking hands, giving hugs, visiting with friends and neighbors and loved ones? Who, who would have ever thought that we'd have to give great thought to riding a bus or getting on an airplane or taking a cab or, or shopping for groceries or even bringing our mail into the house? Truth be told, fear showed up at all of our front doors, if we're going to be honest. And yet, we who are the called, we faced every challenge with an optimistic faith. Do you know why? Because we know that the Lord is on our side. This past year, I think I need to tell you, will not be the last mountain we have to climb. There'll be other mountains we'll have to face up. Some of us, it may be the mountain of debt. For others, it may be the mountain of distress and, and mountains of despair. And for others, mountains of grief uh, that keep trying to find their way into our hearts and into our minds. But we who are signed up and sold out, we are a resilient people. And what that means is that throwing in the towel and giving up is not an option. Somebody say, I know that's right. Matter of fact, matter of fact, the Bible charges us to be steadfast, charges us to be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as we know our labor shall not be in vain. Here's the question this morning. Uh, how many folk here who are in this sanctuary and who are listening in, how many of y'all have a mountain climbing spirit? You know, I, I, I love Florida. I love sunshine, and that's probably not going to change. But I'm always intrigued by those who, who will take on the elements, particularly mountain climbers. They, they intrigue me because in my mind, a mountain climber is a rare breed. I mean, if you ever watch them on television, they, they approach their quest uh, always with a positive attitude. It's all about the challenge. As they put their hands and feet onto the rocks and ice and snow and struggle with all of their might, Deacon Simon, to reach the mountain summit. Why? Because it's the summit. It's where they can finally pause to celebrate the height of their achievement. And I want to ask you a question on this second Sunday of a new year. Uh, um, can we do that just for about 30 seconds? Can, can we just take some time to celebrate? Let's just pause for, for a few seconds, and, and I want you to reflect on the goodness of God, and, and then we're going to celebrate. Think about the fact that, that, that God brought you through last year, and you're still here. Think about the fact that you still have food on your table. Um, think about the fact that you still have clothes on your back, and many of us still have clothes in our closet with tags still on a preach wrap and coffee. Think about the fact that God woke you up this morning and started you on your way, and truth be told, some of us came leaning into 2022 but you made it into 2022 and that alone ought to cause you to wave your hand and say God I thank you for another opportunity because if he woke you up that means you can get up and if you can get up you ought not shut up but you ought to say something about the goodness of God because a whole lot of folks started with us if you call their names guess what they cannot answer but God loved you enough God thought enough of you that he will let you hang out just a little while longer and because time is winding up you ought to thank God that he's giving you another chance to do something for the kingdom that will have eternal ramifications. Is there anybody that came to celebrate that because you know he did not have to do it, but he did. Maybe you lost some loved one, but you are still here. Maybe you lost a neighbor, but you are still here. Maybe you lost a best friend, but you are still here. God is still worthy to be praised, and you ought to let the world know God is good. Not some of the time, but you ought to let them know God is good. We've come this far by faith leaning on the Lord. That's why I asked earlier this morning, who would help me live 
Jesus. Mountain climbing. And I discovered that when you look at mountain climbing, I'm, I'm always intrigued. One of the things that I discovered, Deacon Simpson, that mountain climbing is, is not always uh, about taking the hard way up the mountain with an axe and, and a rope. Sometimes it just requires uh, us learning how to navigate the rocky slopes, the soggy fields, and the airy ridges. Because that's a lot like life, isn't it? As I thought about it, listen, truth be told, it's not always one single crisis that you can point to that would make you sing how I got over. M more than likely, it, it, it's a series of smaller hardships and missteps and, and unforeseen circumstances that force you to rethink your strategies. Y'all, this past year, we, we, we've had to strap on our spiritual hiking boots and navigate through the unexpected. Somebody say, I know that's right. L listen, we, we had to do things like figure out, we, we had to figure out how to educate our children without a classroom. Uh, we had to figure out how, how to try and balance a budget with less income with the cost of everything else still going up. So as we this morning reflect, on this past year and embrace ourselves for another challenging year, uh, that there is someone who, who, who I want to identify with you who, who I think is the ultimate mountain climber. And we can learn a lot from this individual. His name is Caleb. Caleb, for me, Dick Murray, he is a case study in mountain climbing. His unflinching faithfulness and seasoned courage. Did y'all catch that? His unflinching faithfulness and seasoned courage, they were the catalyst for his conquest. When the entire nation wanted to quit its journey at, at Kadesh Barnea and return to slavery in Egypt, it was Caleb and Joshua who stood up to them. These two men, they, they were convinced Deacon Simon beyond a shadow of a doubt that God would deliver on his promise and that they could and would possess the land. Some of y'all, my Bible readers, y'all know the story. When Joshua led his people to the outskirts of Kadesh Barnea, he sent scouts to check out the land and its people to, to see what kind of obstacles, Deacon Robinson, they were going to have to face. Caleb and his crew went on a recon mission, and, and, and they worked their way through the marshes and hills to, to assess the situation. When they came back, here's what the Bible says. In Numbers 13 and 30, here's Caleb's report. Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Unfortunately, that was not the rest of what the scouts said. The other scouts listened to their report. It's in Numbers 13 and 31. You read it. It says, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. What a contrast, y'all, in faith. One said, it's a piece of cake. The other says, y'all, it's impossible. One said, let's get at it. Other says, listen, we dead in the water. One says, look at him, we bout it, bout it. That's young people talk right there. The, the, the other says, y'all, we, we, we don't have a chance in Hades. Listen, the, the, the ten scouts, the, 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 they, were the, they were the old ye of little faith bunch, Dr. Fontaine. In Numbers 13, 32, it says, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel saying the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof and all the people that we saw in it, the men were of great stature. Scouts told the nation of Israel that the inhabitants were giants who made them feel like grasshoppers. What a contrast between 40-year-old Caleb and the rest of his crew. And here's the thing. Not only was there report false it was also evil can I tell you why because it completely watch this 
disregarded God's covenant to give them this promised land. Let me give you this free of charge. If God says he's going to do it, if God says it's going to come to pass, and it's with that thought in mind that, that our lesson uh, today lies in the contrast between these two opinions, these, these two reports, if you will, between the 10 scouts and Caleb. Three nuggets I want to give you, and I'll be out your way this morning. Listen, first of all, when you, when you look at the story and you read this text, here's the first lesson we can pick up from that. Our fear is oftentimes irrational. What do you mean, preacher? Do you not know? Fear can make you forget every good thing God has promised you and done for you. If you are not prayerful and careful, fear can make you forget every good thing God's promised or that God has done for you. In other words, it will cause you to retreat and go back to Egypt. In other words, you, you'll be comfortable with keeping things just the way they are. The scouts were so convinced uh, that the Israelites uh, uh, were so convincing, rather, that the Israelites, when they heard their report, they wanted to settle Chairman Joseph in the wilderness, a place where there was no water and no food. And here's what they were really saying. They were saying, thanks, Lord, but no thanks. We prefer to struggle. Now, that may sound insane, but oftentimes, if we're not careful, we can find ourselves doing the same thing. So thanks, Lord, but, but, but no thanks. I, I'll stay right here. Well, I'll stay right here and I'll just mark time. And the danger is that when God wants you to move, baby, you need to move. Fear calls them to want to stay put. Here's the lesson. You can't mark time when God is, is giving you a directive. Uh, because if you do, you will miss your blessing. In fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, we're in a wilderness right now. It's called COVID. But here's the shout. God has given us some light at the end of the tunnel. Do you know what it is? I'm going to spell it for you. You'll figure it out. V-A-C-C-I-N-E. What does that spell? Vaccine. Listen, listen. Listen. Don't let fear cause you to miss your blessing. Yo, you got to move. Uh, 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 you got to move the way that they had to move. You, you got to move when God says move because if you don't move, you, you, you can miss your opportunity to walk into your destiny. And how many of us want everything that God has for us? Uh, well, you got to be willing to move when the Lord says, I don't care what it looks like, when the Lord says move, you've got to move. Let me ask a rhetorical question. And y'all know rhetorical music, you already know the answer. L listen, here it is. Is our God bigger than any giant? Is our God still the undisputed heavyweight champion of the universe? Is God still able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think? Is God still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore? I hope everybody here said yes. L li li listen, listen, listen. If you think about it, faith in him brought us through this past year. Think about it. We, we, we believe that God would feed us, and he did. We, we believe that God would, would heal us, and some of us can testify he did. We believe that he would provide for us, and guess what? He did. We believed that he would take care of our children and our grandchildren. Some of y'all ought to be shouting right there. And he did. Um, we believed that he would take care of our enemies. <laughs> and he did. We believe that he would handle our financial shortfall. And because we are giving in the manner and the fashion with God here, he did. Now, I had to throw that in free of charge. Listen, we believe that he would protect us. And he did. Didn't he do it? I said, didn't he do it? There ought to be some amens in this house right there. Didn't God do it? 
Well, there ought to be some amens to the one who brought us comfort. There ought to be some amens to the one who gave us hope. There ought to be some amens in here this morning to the one who kept us from falling. Uh, there ought to be some amens in here to the one who provided a ram in the bush. Uh, there ought to be some amens this morning to the one who lifts our burdens and the one who gives us the V-I-C-T-O-R-O-I. How many folk know we have victory in Jesus? So first of all, we learn that fear is irrational. But there's something else. Here's the second nugget. Here's the second lesson we learn. You can't conquer what you won't confront. That's good right there. That rolled off my tongue real naturally. That's good. You, you cannot conquer what you won't confront. I heard one preacher put it this way. In order to fix it, you got to face it. it did that did that resonate with anybody in here? Yes, sir. Listen, listen, you cannot conquer what you won't confront. We never knew what we were made of spiritually until we came against something that was bigger than us. I'm talking to folks who don't walk with God for a minute or two. Am I right about it? Let me say it again. We never knew what we were made of spiritually until we came against something that was bigger than us. Because we came to when we find ourselves against something that was too big for us to handle on our own. That's when we discovered what we really believed. That's where the rubber met the road. And it was then, y'all, I love this, but I'm waiting for this. It was right then and there when the Lord showed up and showed out. When Moses sent to the 12 scouts to check out Israel's new homeland, they all saw the same thing. They, they saw a land, Deacon S. Robinson, rich in milk and honey and giants. Did y'all catch that? They all saw the same thing. Joshua and Caleb saw them too. And let me, let me teach it while I preach it. Faith, everybody say faith. Faith isn't ignoring the obvious. No, that's not faith. That's denial. No, no. Acknowledging a problem isn't, or uh, acknowledging that a problem isn't, uh, that is not an expression of doubt. Acknowledging that there is a problem, that is not an expression of doubt. That's just admitting reality. And it's not a sin. Even the Apostle Paul had, had to admit reality in 1 Thessalonians 2.18. Paul says, he says, we would have come unto you, but Satan hindered us. <laughs> Satan is real. Can I get a witness? The difference between the scouts and Caleb was in how they saw the problem. Ten folks said, ten of them said, we saw the giants and we were in our own eyes as grasshoppers. But Joshua and Caleb, they saw things totally differently. They said, do not fear the people of the land. For, for, for they are but bread for us to eat. For the Lord is with us. I like that. Notice what he said, the tail part. The Lord is with us. And do you know what? You, you know what? When, when you've got real faith, your faith will feed off of the stuff the enemy throws at you. When, when, when you are really standing on the promises and not just sitting on the premises, uh, you, you'll find yourself, when, 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 when stuff like this shows up, when you find yourself uh, with your back against the wall, um, you'll find yourself quoting the words of, 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 of that hymnologist, uh, y'all know him, um, he didn't go to the church, but he wrote a song that says, let's get it on. Because you know that the Lord is with me. Listen, and in case y'all hadn't figured it out, you, and I'm talking about every one of y'all who were blood-bought and love Jesus, you plus the Lord is always a majority. <laughs> Did you not know that? Can what it looks like, you plus the Lord will, will always be a majority. Can I get a witness? Yes, this, this, this past year, we, we've had to confront the enemy. And what it's caused us to do, we've had to dig down into our repertoire of scripture and Bible verses. And, and we find ourselves having to read, reread, and repeat the word of God. 
Can I get a witness in here? Yes, sir. That, that was it for many of us. Some of us, when the food was low, we went to Psalms 37, 25, which says, I have been young, but now got a few miles on me, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed. But Psalms 37, 25, read it when you get home. Um, some of us, the money may have gotten a little low. We were helping other folk who were struggling maybe. But, but you went to Psalms 50 and 10. Psalms 50 and 10 says, for every beast of the forest is mine. And the cattle on thousand hills. <laughs> Some of us, maybe our jobs or our loved ones, our children's job may have been jeopardy. We, we went to Matthew 6, 33, Chairman Joseph. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. And maybe even this past year, the, when the bills were due and, 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 and your, your, your finance was on life support, you went to Psalms 24.1 that says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell, dwell therein. Here it is, don't miss this. It's one thing to proclaim what God can do. It's quite another to trust that God will do it. I'm not pointing at anybody if the shoe don't fit, pass it on. There are a whole lot of folk who are saved from the neck up. Oh, they talk a good talk. <laughs> oh, yes, they do. But, but, but when the rubber meets the road, it's a whole different scenario. It's one thing to talk it. It's something else to live it. And the Bible says that the just shall live by, by faith in a God that will not fail us. So, and, and many of y'all here today, you, you can testify that, that over the years you had to stand on the promises and, and confront the enemy time and time again. And here's the shout. Every time you did it, the Lord always came through. Can I get a witness right here? He always showed up. He always made a way. He always brought you out. So, so here it is. Listen carefully to how I'm going to say this. If you've ever doubted the Lord before, you sure should not doubt him now. Because here it is. If God can turn a lion's den into a den of tranquility, if God can turn a fiery furnace into an air-conditioned bed and breakfast, um, if God can turn a raging sea into a quiet vacation cruise, um, then we are never to doubt what God can do in our situation because God is with us and God is able. We serve a God who can take our dangerous places and turn them into a safe haven. Somebody shout, I know that's right. One more thing and I'll let you go. Another lesson we learn as we look at this passage today, this lesson today, this story today, here it is. We learn that God blesses the faithful. I don't want to rush that. God blesses the faithful. So he, he blesses our faithfulness. So listen, if we hold on to our mountain climbing faith and don't quit, God promises to take us to the mountaintop, to the summit, if you will. How do you know it, Pastor? Look at Caleb. The unflinching mountain climber Caleb. Look what happened in his life. The, 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 listen, the cowardice of the scouts was not the end of the story. Because what happened after that is, the, is a story of faith overriding fear. Bible lets us know God prolonged Caleb's life. And here's what he did. He lived well into his 80s. In other words, he let him live long enough to see all the cowards die off. <laughs> he, he let him live long enough to, 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 to watch a cowardly generation die off. And so with, with a new generation at his back, Caleb asked Moses, said, Moses, let me lead an army into the promised land. And that's what the text when Moses, when, when the Bible says, he says, give me this mountain. 
And I'm so glad that the unfinished story in the book of Numbers became Caleb's victory in the book of Joshua. It was, it was the feared sons of Anak who became the grasshoppers and the Israelite became the giants. And here's a reminder for our young people, for our younger generation. Hear me well. God keeps his word. Whatever young person to hear me, God keeps his word. Now, now sometimes you, you have to wait out the naysayers, but God keeps his word. And so you have to learn to ignore those who say it can't be done. Hear me, young people. And, then you, and as you mature, I hope that you can pray for those who lack the courage to press on. Because here's what I know to be true. If God is for you, bad English but good preacher, it don't even matter who's against you. At the beginning of this past year, a lot of us, we were filled with trepidation. We were in the midst of this virus. And the words of faith, while, while they were on our lips, but, but, but they were not as loud in our hearts. But now, God has brought us through this year. Yes, sir, now as we have, have, have double-dutched our way into another year, I hope and pray that we, like Caleb, that we're ready to climb any mountain to reach faith summit and receive what God has for us. Um, because the reality is Satan last year, and he does it all the time, but, but I know for sure Satan last year tried to knock us down, but God lifted us up. Satan tried to bind us up, but God released us. Satan tried to destroy us, but, but God kept and covered us. Somebody say, I know that's right. Um, Satan tried to ruin us, but, but, but God has restored us. Uh, Reverend Smith, Satan tried to turn our lives into rubbish, but God has turned our lives into riches. Uh, yes, God blesses the faithful. Yes, God blesses the faithful. Yes, God blesses the faithful. So we, 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 listen, listen, we're going to try something this year we've never done before. We, as, as a church, we are going to tithe on every dime that comes in this church. And there's some folks right now saying, that's insane. I got news for you. Uh, you you got to take God at his word. Uh, because think about it. If God will bless me individually for tithing, what will God do for a church if we get on board and commit ourselves uh, to do it? God will open up the window for Mount Calvary, not individually, but collectively as well. And I'm on earth saying God got for me individually and earth saying God got for this church collectively because we have so much work to do. We got to let folk know Jesus is still in the blessing business and eternity is still available for whosoever will. We going to climb this mountain. I'm done. That's it. And maybe there's somebody this morning that may not be feeling blessed. If you're not feeling blessed, let me tell you something. Your help is only your spoken word away. Your troubles can be placed behind you and, and, and your help is right ahead of you. Your troubles may, may make you cry sometimes, but watch this. I promise you as a child of God, your help is on. The Bible says in Psalms 30 and 5, weeping may endure for a night. I'm a living testimony. Joy will come, but you got to hold on and you got to keep the faith. So this morning on this second Sunday of a brand new year, we, 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 we've come to worship and praise. We've come to celebrate, saints. We're celebrating those of us who have a mountain climbing mentality. Whatever the new year brings, y'all, we're ready for it. And we're going to say, Lord, give us this mountain, just like Caleb. Uh, Lord, we're going to say, Lord, give us this mountain. The devil may mock us, but he won't distract us. Because we are pressing on the upward way. New heights we are gaining when? Every day. And here's why that is possible. Because the Lord is on our side. 
Y'all, we have so much to be thankful for. If you don't feel like you're blessed, think about this. Uh, we've been saved through his grace. Um, we've been forgiven through his mercy. We've been lifted through his love. Um, we've been redeemed by his blood. Um, we've been calmed by his peace. Um, we've been comforted by his presence. Uh, we've been encouraged by his promises. We've been refreshed by his glory. And we've been sustained through his touch. Uh, I'm done. Caleb knew it and I pray that all of us believe it. Uh, God is with us. Um, not only is God with us, God is for us. Uh, not only is God with us and for us, God will take care of us. Uh, li li listen, I was talking to Pastor Webb last week and he sent me a video um, outside of his church on the billboard. He has this sign and I've been saying it ever since I saw it. Outside of New Bethel over in Tampa, Pastor Webb has a sign that says, God will see us through in 2022. Uh, I need 10 folk who can testify that you believe whatever it is, God will see us through in 2020 because I have discovered uh, Deacon S. Reed, if you trust in the Lord uh, with all your heart uh, and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways, if you will acknowledge him, guess what? Uh, he will direct our path. Tell your neighbor, God will take care of you. Uh, can I get at least 10 witnesses who can stand and testify that that, that listen, if you find yourself in this new year, that you recognize that it's a new year that's going to come with new challenges but your testimony is that there may be many things about tomorrow that you can't seem to understand but the shout is because you know the one who holds tomorrow and you know the one who holds your hand, you can say ain't no mountain high enough ain't no valley low enough ain't no river, it ain't him but it'll preach, ain't no river wide enough that'll stop me from being all God wants me to be, that'll stop me from doing all God has called me to do that will stop me receive all the blessings that God wants me to receive do I have any mountain climbers in the house this morning onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on give me this mountain so when we stand on the promises of God and we line up with the word of God and our sincere desire is to do the will of God you might well get ready to receive the blessings from God can I get a witness in here new year new challenges and while we don't know what tomorrow brings they come up with something now called the, the flu virus, the, the flu and the virus, coronavirus, that's next. Okay. Because I know who holds my future. And I'm going to hold on to his unchanging hand. Now is not the time for us to get weary and weak in well-doing. There's a great work. Do you know how many folk are still out there lost in need of a savior? They need to know that Jesus is bigger than coronavirus. And they need to know that serving him will pay off if we are faithful, if we are committed, if we are devoted, if we are loyal to the cause of Christ. That's our assignment for 2020, 2022, to continue to hold up the light. Others who are in darkness can be drawn to the saving power of Jesus Christ. Which means you, you, you can't listen to all the negativity You've got to stay in your operating manual, which is the word of God. The grass may wither, the flower may fade, but the word of our God, it's going to stand forever. Presidents may come presidents may go but the word of our God shall stand forever and I mentioned someone may not feel like you're not blessed baby if you've got this book and if you're connected with the man in the book you are blessed beyond measure 
Because this word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our feet, will help us navigate through the vicissitudes of life. But the question is in 2022, do we have any mountain climbers? It's going to be a challenge. We need you to give maybe like you've never given before. We're going to need you to pray like you've never prayed before. We're going to need you to encourage like you've never encouraged before. We're going to need you to witness like you've never witnessed before. But here's the reality. God has already given us what we need to reach the summit. Faith in him and the assurance of knowing that he will never leave us nor forsake us. In fact, he says, Lo, I'm with you. Always. Even to the end of the world. 2022, what will it be? Will you say life is too tough or will you say onward, Christian soldiers? Let's continue to do great things for God. And the reason that's possible because greater is he that's in you and me than he that is in the world. The doors of the church are now open. If there's some man, some woman, some boy, or some girl, if you're here, we pray that in the name of Jesus you would come. If you're tuning in today and you're not saved, what better way to start this year than to surrender your life to Christ? To get on board, to join a winning team. If you're tuning in by way of technology, the phone number is 386 447 5719. Call in. There's someone standing by right now to pray with you. Help you receive a new lease on life. If you're in the sanctuary today, Christ is not the centerpiece of your heart. We offer him to you today. No strings attached. All you've got to do is say, yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, Lord, to your way. He'll come in and your life will never be the same. What better way to start the year? Come on, ensemble. Doors of the church now. If you're here, would you come? 2020, you, 2022 will have some challenges. But the good news is if you've got Christ in your life, you don't face it alone. For he's with you every step of the way. His spirit will lead God and direct you. When, when life knocks you down, he'll be there to, to pick you up. But you've got to be willing to make the first step. Confess with your mouth and believe your heart that Christ died for your sins, was buried in a borrowed tomb, and got up on the third day and now sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding on your behalf. If you'll accept him, he'll come into your heart. And what a year this will be. There's nothing better than having Jesus, than, than, than having the Holy Spirit, having that assurance in your life. Will there be one today? It's still time to call in. 386-447-5719. Oh, he
done, we're done, we're done. But can you say that with me one more time? All the same, folk, come on. He's sweet. If you know him for yourself, you ought to say, he's sweet, I know. Oh, 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 oh. clouds, they will rise. Strong winds, strong winds, strong winds. the name of our God. And if it belongs as we get to, ready to face 2022, understand God is with us. God is for us. He just needs some vessels that he can work through who will trust him enough to try him. And you've tried him enough to trust him. And none of us can say what tomorrow holds with this virus or anything else, but because we know who holds tomorrow, our hand is in his hand and he's promised to never leave us alone. Continue to pray for this world. As Reverend Watson said, pray for the leadership of this country. Pray for our young people. There's so much dissension between the schools. Are they going to be in school or out of school? And I know that's having a toll on them. So pray that whatever the decision is, it will be in the best interest of these children. Amen? Yeah. And if you've got a neighbor, friend, or enemy that's not vaccinated, ask them to go ahead and get it. Yeah. Tell them Pastor Coffey asked them to do it. Amen. We want to make sure that we do all we can to stay safe. Next Sunday, our preacher will be the Reverend Eugene Diamond, Abyssinia Baptist Church, Jacksonville, Florida. We're looking for a great time of fellowship in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Happy New Year, and may the Lord God bless you real good. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with these thy people, now henceforth and forevermore. All of those who are committed to his cause and love him shouted amen, 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 amen. and amen. God bless you. May he bless you oh, real good. May the Lord, may may the Lord, Lord God bless you real good. good. May the Lord, oh, may the Lord God bless you real good. Commit your heart, commit your heart to